Hi, good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Redemption Hill Kids. We've got a new friend here with us this morning. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, my name's Bob. Hey, Bob. Welcome to Redemption Hill Kids. Well, you know what? I know you haven't been here the last couple weeks, so uh, just curious. How have you been these last couple weeks? Have you been spending your time with your mom and dad? Well, we've been doing a lot of uh, video games and board games and oh 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 we we did some puzzles. Oh yeah, that's pretty cool, Bob. Well, Bob, what do you think is the hardest part about a puzzle? Well, um, I think it's that all the pieces are different. Well, how does that make it difficult? Well, you know, it's you just don't know where they go. You don't know where they fit into the to the big picture. Oh, yeah. Uh, is there something that you like to do that helps you uh, figure out where the pieces go? Well, you know, I, I like to start with the edges. I put that around, you know, I, and so you have a framework, and, and then you can work from there. Ah, so, it, you know, it is a good idea to have some framework that we can um, judge things off of and we can begin to see. Uh, how do you put that framework together? Well, you know, all the edge pieces have a straight side, so that's very helpful. Yeah, it is helpful to have kind of a, um, like a cheat sheet, you know? It's something that, that we can look at and see and we know this is where this piece goes. So, but you know what? That kind of makes me think of today's lesson. Oh, yeah? How's that? How so? Well, you know, the last couple of weeks we've been talking about Jesus' miracles some of the miracles that he did, and how that gave us a picture, and gave the disciples a picture of God's divinity. Oh, oh, you know my favorite miracle? What's your favorite miracle? Well, my favorite is when Jesus <coughs> spits in the mud, and then he wipes it on a guy's eye, and the guy can see again. Well, that is a pretty cool miracle. Do you ever spit in the mud? <coughs> oh, yeah! Yeah. You know, I think my boys would like to do that, but we pretty much told them no spitting in the mud and wiping it on people in a roundabout kind of way. Oh, yeah, well, you know, that's a, always a good idea to be considerate of other people, you know, because uh, putting mud on someone would not be nice. Yeah, that, you know, that's a good point. I hope, I hope they remember that. So Jesus has done these miracles. Uh, he started out, we started out by... Jesus calming the storm. Oh, yeah, I've heard that one. And then after that, he casts a demon out of a man. And so in the storm, we see that God is sovereign over creation. And in the demon cast, being cast out, we see that he's sovereign over spiritual um, authorities and spiritual things. And then Jesus feeds the multitude was the next week. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the fish and the loaves of bread. Yep, that's correct. And so in that, we see Jesus' divinity. So when we talk about those things, we see pieces of the puzzle. The apostles, they were walking with Jesus, and so they didn't have the rest of the Bible to help them to look back and see what was going on. Oh, well, oh, that's like if that's like we have a whole puzzle. We have the picture of the puzzle that we can look at when we put it together. And they don't have a picture, so they don't know what the picture looks like. And and then they just got to put the pieces together. Correct. So they're living it, and they don't know what the picture is. But Jesus is, is helping them along the way, and he's helping them to see who he is, and he's revealing himself to them. Today's story is Jesus walking on the water. Oh, you can't walk on water. Well, I can't, and probably you can't, but Jesus could. Wow, well, that's amazing. Yep, it sure is. So, in Matthew chapter 14, verses 25 through 34. 
we hear the story of Jesus and him walking on water. Well, it starts with Jesus sends the disciples away after feeding the multitude. And he goes out to pray. And you know what? That, that reminds me. We should pray also. If Jesus, who was fully God and fully man, had to pray, we should pray also. In his humility and in his humanity, he went up and got away in a quiet place and prayed. And we should do that too. We'll also see some other things that we'll need as we tell our story. So, the disciples go out. They're out in the boat. And they're rowing and, and they're fighting the wind. And in the middle of the night, they look out and they see Jesus walking on the water. And as he's walking, they begin to think, maybe he died. Maybe something happened to him. And, and this is his ghost. Oh, ghost! Ghosts are scary! Yeah, they would be scary, right? So, but Jesus says to them, Fear not, for it is me. Do not be afraid. And Peter, oh, Peter, oh, man, he's, he's like my big brother. Sometimes he just never stops talking. Yeah, right? I'm kind of that way, too, sometimes. I like to talk. Do you like to talk, Bob? Oh, oh, yeah, I like to talk, too. Yeah, right? So, Peter says, well, Jesus, if it's you, command me to come out on the water and to join you, to walk on the water with you. And Jesus says, come. Oh, no way. Do, was Peter afraid to get out of the boat? Well, you know what? I'm sure he was because physics and everything that they've experienced as fishermen, you know, They'd seen people fall out of boats, and they'd seen people fall off of docks, and nobody ever bounced off the water. They all got wet. But Peter stepped out because he trusted Jesus, and we should trust Jesus also with, with all of our lives. So Jesus stepped out. You know, it's kind of like that puzzle. When talking about Jesus and trusting him, sometimes we have pieces of a puzzle of our life that don't make any sense. We don't know where they fit or how they go. But we trust Jesus, and someday we'll see the big picture. So, Jesus steps out, or Peter steps out on the water. And he's walking on the water towards Jesus. Oh, no way! Yeah. And as he's walking, he begins to look around. And he begins to see the wind and the waves, kind of like the troubles of our lives. And he begins to take his eyes off of Jesus and, and look at those things, and he begins to sink. And as he's sinking, he, he yells out, Lord, save me! Oh, oh, did he? Yes, he did. In fact, Jesus reached down and grabbed him, pulled him back up on the, wa on the water, and they walked back to the boat. And when they got there, they get on the boat, and the wind stopped and the waves calmed, and the disciples begin to worship Jesus because they begin to see this was no ordinary man. Oh, oh, yeah. And we know that if Jesus was not God, he would have stopped them because no one is worthy of worship except for God. No one. Oh, yeah. So I should be humble, right? Yeah. Yep. We don't need our own worship. So that's the end of our story today. Now, let's take a few minutes and review our memory verse. So, last week's memory verse, the last two weeks, was Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6. Oh, what's that say? It says, all we like sheep have gone astray, each one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Oh, what does that mean? Well, it, it means we, we do what we want in our pride. We do what we think is right, when we think it's right, how we want to do it. And, and that is sin. But God has laid on that, our sin on Jesus on the cross. And that's, that's where, also where we see the gospel in today's story. We see that 
God saved, that Jesus saved Peter from sinking into the water. And that wasn't the biggest enemy that Peter had. Peter's biggest enemy was his sin. Oh, see, it's, it's good for us to see these pictures so we can see our own sin and we can see how we need a Savior just like Peter did and just like everyone else. Jesus was perfectly humble and righteous and he went and died on the cross for our sins. And that is the big picture that Jesus was preparing the disciples to see. So, that's our last week's memory verse. And this week's memory verse comes from John chapter 14, verse 15, where Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commands. So, Bob? Yeah? Do you think you can say that with me? Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what? Why don't you just say it? You can, you can read, right? You read it. Okay. It says, John chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, you will keep my commands. That's a good verse. It's good. Whoa, it will help us to know what to do. It's kind of like the framework of the puzzle, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's our framework. It helps us to know what to do. Well, kids, thanks for joining us this morning. I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, may God bless you and keep you. And... Uh, We'll see you guys soon. Bob, you want to say goodbye? Oh, yeah. Adios, amigos! Yeah, yeah, yeah!